Eric, you consider yourself first and foremost uh, an option trader. Can you tell us a little bit what it means? Yeah, absolutely. So where I come from is actually as, in, as, as a market maker in equity options. I used to trade on the floor of uh, New York Stock Exchange, ARCA, um, and that's kind of how I got my start. So I'm most familiar with options. And option trading is different from, uh, well, first we should define them all, right? The first one is what everyone knows, just regular spot trading. That's when you go on to insert random exchange here, like Coinbase perhaps. And uh, you know, if you're just buying and selling there, that's what we call spot trading. Then you have futures, which are derivative products, which essentially are uh, kind of like spot, but an agreement at a later date with an expiration for a price right now, usually trading at some sort of premium or discount. And then options is where we take that and pervert it just one more step further and add on not only an expiration date, but we also add on different strike prices at which these derivative products you know, uh, go into go uh, go into the money, become actually well active. Now, the problem or the what gets a little bit confusing about options is that you have both calls and puts. And you can both be a buyer or seller of calls and puts. So calls, essentially, if you're a buyer, you're looking for price to go up. If you're buying puts, you're you're yeah, you're doing the opposite. You're looking for price to go down. Like I said, you can sell them both as well. So there's all sorts of different uh, arbitrage plays with that. For myself, I would always be looking to, to lock in some arbitrage. So let's say someone comes in, wants to buy a call for me. I'll go, you know, I'll, and if my model says it's good, do I'll do it, and then I'll pull on the other side by perhaps uh, buying, or sorry, buying a, um, sorry, selling a put, and then buying some, uh, or sorry, selling some, uh, uh, selling some stock underline, and then you can kind of find these little arbitrage plays like that. So when I say that I'm an options trader first, I'm typically thinking in in that sort of mode. I want to be locking in all sorts of sides and making sure that I'm keeping relatively delta neutral. So I'm never really looking for like the big home run play, even though on my YouTube channel, I will show a few positions like that here and there. But those are very few and far between because they, they really just don't happen all that often. More often than not, things are ranging and caught in like a, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, in a nice little zone, kind of like we are right now. And that's the beauty of options because I can construct a zone of profit essentially where as long as we stay within that zone, I can make money off that. And if we go outside of that zone, then I start to lose money. But there, because options are so uh, magical in a way, you know, there are plenty of ways to, uh, to cover yourself if that, you know, if that happens. In one of your latest videos, you said that uh -huh. Um, this is not an appropriate time to go bearish, despite the fact that during the weekend we experienced some significant losses. Um, yeah. But you said that in, in case you want to short on Bitcoin, you better do it with options. So yeah. why do you think options are the best tool to go short on Bitcoin in the current situation? The reason why I'd rather do it with options is because anytime I'm trading against the overall macro trend, I don't want to put that position on spot. So I really don't want to be short spot in an overall upwards market. Just like last year, I didn't want to be long spot while we were in a downwards market. So if I am going to have any sort of counter trend exposure, I'd rather do it with options because one, it's easier to cover. I can specify that strike and uh, and, and and then and then cover in advance. It's all well out, you know, well played. Uh, in accordance to the levels that we were looking at right on over there. So, you know, I can pick, you know, say like the 10,200 ish areas where I start to get bearish once again, if we actually break down, I can say, okay, well, then I'll, you know, I'll sell some, uh, you know, if, if, you know, if I want to have some downside exposure and we break that, I'll sell some, t I'll sell some 10,500 strike calls or something like that. Or maybe I'll pick the next resistance, like 11,000 or, or 11,500 is what I have right now, uh, you know, of which we were just looking at. So 11,200 is kind of where I see the short term and the medium term change. So that's why I shorted the 11,500 strike calls because I know that if we get back above 11,2, I can just cover those, you know, still still make money of them, still take profit, and I can actually keep a, a spot underlying position as well long uh, without ever going short. So that's the beauty of it is I don't actually have to risk that having that counter trend position, which for me typically doesn't, you know, work out too well. Of course, everyone's got their own secret sauce. Um, you know, I'm not saying anything too crazy here. Uh, but that's, that's just my style and what's worked best for me. I've, I've had very little success trading against the overall macro trend. Okay. And you also said that um, the one we experienced on the weekend, uh, it can be considered like a bearish trap, a bear trap. Yeah. What do you mean by bear trap? Yeah, so bear traps. Um, essentially, we had some uh, quote unquote bearish news come out, right? In, in the United States, I think Trump uh, put out a tweet saying he basically doesn't like Bitcoin. It seemed like more of a political thing to me between him and Facebook because he and uh, he and uh, Zuckerberger don't like each other. Um, so 
you know, those sorts of news articles in the, you know, in the market are, are classic. When I was in, when I was in traditional markets, you know, anytime you'd have a news article like that, it's usually a counter trade type idea. People, retailers will, will, will kind of treat it as real. They'll sell in and then what can happen. And what I think is probably likely happening right now, as long as we don't take out that next level that we spoke about 10 to, um, I would say that uh, that you know that sort of news, that sort of price price activity is promoted by the people who actually do move the markets, and what they know is that hey, if we create a little bit of emotion, if we get people a little bit you know on edge, and they start reading the news and they say, uh oh, Trump doesn't like Bitcoin, he's gonna ban Bitcoin, whatever that means, you know, it means nothing, um, and uh, and so I better sell now. Well, you can you know they can drive it down, and make you think that that's actually gonna happen, and then you know flip it around, and now you got a lot of people chasing who are very emotional and who can. Add fuel onto onto like an already burning fire if they do want to if they do want to uh, throw on some upwards momentum. Coin Telegraph, like, subscribe, and hodl.